Ben Horner uh, with Mervyn Turner of Shamrock Boxing. Um, Hello, didn't, ben. didn't get a chance of speaking to you after the last show. No, it was um, all a bit of a rush yeah, and so crazy. forth. Yeah, so it's good to but, catch um, up with you. So we'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll move on to you know the future and see what's happening yeah. within the Shamrock Boxing stable. So sure. Things, things didn't go to plan, you know, at the last show. No, um, there's um, you know it was a it was a genuine you know people talk about genuine 50-50 fights. That was one of them. That was a real genuine 50-50 fight. It was on the line for both boxers. Whoever won that fight was going to go on, um, you know, to English and possibly greater things. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever lost had to, to come back again. Unfortunately, Nathan came out the wrong end. Now, after the show and the analysis and everything else, we, we now know why. Um, and there were reasons for that that the camp haven't released yet, so I'm not going to go into that. But there were, were good reasons um, why Nathan didn't perform on the night. Um, Philip Bowes, I'm not going to take anything away from Philip Bowes. He's, he was, uh, you know, a gentleman and, and a thorough professional leading up to the fight. Um, that Philip Bowes on that night was the best Philip Bowes I've ever seen. And he needed to be to beat Nathan. Um, now, let's talk about Nathan. No doubt about Nathan Dale's, uh, you know, credentials. Uh, it's a bit of a setback for him, but... In a way, the O's off his plate now. Mm -hmm. He can go forward, and um, rest assured, you know he'll be fighting again on March the third on a, a Norwich show, and um, he'll come back and he'll be stronger for it, and he'll be all the better for it. And you know, Nathan will be a champion um, very, very shortly. Something that I got, um, well, I see, I didn't manage to get on camera after the fight. Philip Bowes come into the change room, see Nathan afterwards, and said to him, you know. When he lost that O himself, that pressure it's lifted, and like you've just now said, for Nathan, he can go out there and enjoy himself now. He hasn't got that pressure of the O it's behind an, him. Yeah, it's a modern thing, this, with the, with the O. Um, you know, preserving the O, preserving the O. And it's gone to the extremes now where it's actually detrimental, detrimental to both boxing and the prospect mm -hmm. because um, a lot of coaches are not taking fights that are learning fights, that will yeah. push their fighter on. They're not taking the risk. And hence, when you get 10 and 0 and 12 and 0 kids and they're stepping up, they're not equipped for it. Yeah. You know, and they're just not equipped. Philip Bowes lost his O. He's now a better boxer for it. Nathan's lost his O. He will be a better boxer for it. You 100%. know, Nathan's had good learning fights. He's had championship fights. He's had fights where I remember... Um, the guy won the last round and we were, you know, oh, this yeah. is close. Um, so you know, he's had those learning fights and it's great. You know, both Philip Bowes and Nathan Dale are good professionals. And um, yes, Bowes come in and um, had a word with Nathan, which was really nice. <clears throat> you know, there's a, there's a lot of mutual respect there and you never know. They might meet again in the future. Um, but yeah, Nathan will learn from it and move on. Looking at another boxer, um, he never thought he'd make it as a pro. He sort of pushed and pushed and pushed and argued and fought and done everything he possibly could. Um, it was still a die for him on, his last, on the last show. You know, everyone said to him, "Come through this. The next show will be your big one." You know, the the, the, the dream will sort of become reality. Safe from Morris. Um, Safe from yeah. the Z-Man Morris. Yeah. Um, listen, you. It's just infectious. You know, the enthusiasm around the guy, you know. He came into boxing, he never, he was from the streets. He came into boxing, it was like, wow. You know, he was around all these people that were inspiring him. He got out of perhaps bad ways that, mm -hmm. that he was in. He, he's a great family man now. And boxing's done that, you know. Boxing doesn't make someone, but it, but it, it sort of channels you know, and, and it focuses the mind. And it's done that with uh, Zafer. <coughs> he's such an infection, he's just so happy to be where he is. He's so happy to be a professional boxer. Yeah. That was his dream. And he got turned down, turned down, he went away, trained harder, got turned down, trained harder <laughs> again, turned down, you know. Every time you look around, he's there, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, And eventually he turned pro. And, you know, if he, he was told if he'd come through his last fight, would get him a little title to start that path off and um, you know again he 
He's learnt on the job, but he's had learning fights all the way through. He hasn't had pushovers, he hasn't had, you know, Mexican road sweepers coming in and, and throwing themselves on the ground in the first round. He's had mm -hmm. some hard fights. Yeah. I think he got a draw, didn't he? Yeah, he uh, did, yeah. So. And then he come back and avenge that, that mm -hmm. draw. So that's the character that he is. So now uh, Nathan is actually topping the bill in Norwich, in his hometown. You know, what a fantastic thing to happen yeah. to anybody. You know, from nothing, you're now topping the bill um, for, for a classic challenge belt. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a great fight for, for Nathan. His fans are going to be out in force. And uh, the Halls is a great venue, as you know. Yeah. And it's going to be a great night. Great night for the kid, and he thoroughly, thoroughly deserves it. This is what, you know, Graham and, uh, and I, Graham Everett and I, had, had a chat about it. And, you know, that's why we're in boxing. Yeah. It's great to have champions. Yeah. British, well, whatever. You know, Graham's had them all. I've been involved with, with boxing for many, many years. But this is what it's a, a, truly about. Taking a kid like this that's so enthusiastic about boxing, his life is boxing, and fulfilling it, his dream. To be part of that is fantastic and safe and good luck to you, boy. This is going away from the show a little bit. Um, someone who's supposed to box on the last show, um, unfortunately pulled out for whatever reason, Craig Poxton. Oh, Craig, yeah. Um, everyone was sort of, why is he not boxing in Norwich? Why is he not on the next show? Um, news come out, he's got the Southern Area title fight against Boyd Jones Jr. down at York Hall. Yep. You know, what does that mean for the stable? But listen, all these things are great for the stable. All these things are great because... Shamrock Boxing's given these guys a platform. You know, when we started, you know, I keep harping on about it. Graham and I started in Norwich three years ago with, with almost nothing. But, but let me tell you something, Graham is a great trainer. Mm -hmm. um, his enthusiasm for the, for the sport just wears off on the whole stable. He's a disciplinarian, so if you're with him, you know, you've got to be professional. Yeah. And from that platform, all, all we've done is given those guys a platform you know, with Graham, with John Thaxton, Darren, great, great training yep. to allow them to achieve the maximum they can achieve. So, you know, Craig's had an English title fight. Unfortunately, you know, he come out the wrong end of that. Now he's got a very, very winnable fight against Boy Jones. Yeah. Um, you know, I know his camp are very, very happy, uh, very, very confident that he's going to be Southern Area champion. And that'd be great. You know, it'd be great for, for, for Craig and it'd be great to bring it back to, to defend in Norwich and yeah. I'll be bidding for that. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously back to the, the show coming up March the 3rd. March the 3rd, 3rd. Friday March the 3rd. Um, someone who made his debut, he kept it under wraps, didn't want to sort of announce it too much because he couldn't sell any tickets, it was a dinner show, whatever reason. He's now being able to sort of come out and show his fans what he can do, Connor Vine. Um, Connor Vine, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic prospect. Um, I've known Connor actually for, for some time. I spoke to him a long, long time ago. Um, wasn't quite ready to turn pro. He's now moved down to Colchester um, with the army. <coughs> um, massive experience behind him. Um, made his debut on a dinner show in London. There was no tickets available, so you know, rightly, he couldn't announce anything, you know. Um, so, in reality, this is going to be his debut. You know, it's his debut on the Shamrock Show. Um, it's his debut in Norwich. And uh, I think you're going to see a, a, a packed crowd there from Colchester. And, um, you know, the army get behind their people. And I'm sure the army in Colchester is going to get behind Conor Vane because he's a real talent. And do you know what? He's such a nice kid. Yeah, 100%. And... Keeping with Russell Smith down in Colchester. Yeah. He's got yeah, Marcus Poston, Alan Retier, both featuring on the show as well. Um, yeah. Alan come back from a loss and he's, you know, back on the win trail again. And Marcus unfortunately got the loss, but now looking to sort of rectify that in 2017. Yeah, I mean, um, Russell's doing really well down there. Russ doesn't get enough credit, so big up to him. You know, he puts an awful lot of time in with, with, with a good stable of boxers down there. Um, Graham thinks. The world of him, you know, very, very, uh, thinks very, very highly of, of Russ, and, and you can see that in the boxes that he's producing. Uh, so yeah, Connor's in a in a nice little stable down there. Alan, come back, mm -hmm. you know, um, showed what he's what he's made of. 
actually boxed very well, I thought. Yeah. Uh, very, very well. Learned a lot from his loss. So there you are again, you know, we're talking of a kid that's had a loss early in his career. He's come back, he's learned from it. Mm -hmm. Marcus, well, he's got to do the same thing. Yeah. But within the stable, you've got all of that experience that have had the loss and come back. So he's got something to emulate. Yeah. So Marcus has got a great amateur pedigree. So he will come back. Um, I think you'll see a different Marcus, much more determined, focused Marcus. So I'm hoping he gets the win and uh, gets back on, on the track on March the 3rd. Obviously, we'll sort of leave it there with that. Um, yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. More news to come. And, uh, yeah, sure. no doubt we'll, we'll have more to say uh, as we get towards the show. And uh, no doubt Norwich will turn out in uh, and the Colchester and Essex fans yeah. that's fantastic yes, yes, to crazy. see them. Yeah. they take over Norwich yeah. you know, they come up put the hotels out yeah. you can't get bloody hotel room it's fantastic isn't it you know but it's great for Norwich boxing so really looking forward to the show brilliant thanks for your time Evan thank nice you, to thank to you Ben nice to see nice you again to see you. catch up soon